Hi pilots and co-pilots, it's Brian here. Um, I'm just starting a new series of uh, short videos that go over all the utilities and plugins that I'm finding as I learn X-Plane and discover the wonderful world of X-Plane and those utilities and plugins that are really either improving the experience or making my using of X-Plane much easier. So today I'd like to talk about an app I found the other day called X Organizer on the xplane.org store. I'll provide the link at the bottom of this video. Um, this has really helped me massively in managing my Xplane environment. Uh, one of the things that uh, I think I thought I'd enjoy about moving to Xplane was that many people had said that dealing with custom scenery and so on was way easier in Xplane than it ever was in FSX. And then I found that you put all of your uh, custom scenery into the custom scenery folder but uh, then not everything works as well as you'd expect because uh, you uh, end up having to manually configure the ini file in there and reordering and then loading up and seeing if it works and going back and reordering again and well to be honest that seemed every bit as confusing as the old days with fsx in fact a little less clear to myself than the old days um so I, fig I finally found this X Organizer app um, or utility, whatever you want to call it, in the xplane.org store and installed it. Now, before we carry on talking, don't rush out and install it without, of course, backing up your existing config file, your any file that's in there. Because it says that very clearly in the manual that came with it. Of course, we all do what the manual says. We all read the manual before we start installing and clicking on stuff, don't we? Well, actually, I never do. But in this case, I did read it. But you know what? I ran it anyway because my uh, config was a mess. And uh, if this was going to overwrite it, so be it. I didn't care. So here you can see on this screen, this is the screen you're presented with when you first load it up. Um, there's four different tabs along here. We have plugins and scripts, custom scenery, information on airports and mesh, and information on versions. Uh, along the top, you have various tabs. You can actually launch X-Plane from straight in here. Um, I bought X-Plane on Steam, so uh, something to remember is you have to load up Steam in the background as well. You can't just launch it from here first. It will require Steam to be running as well. You can rescan. You can set it to auto-save or turn that off. And there's other um, menu options as well. This first tab here is, uh, you can see, I don't have any Fly with Lua scripts. I don't have any Python scripts. But on the left, this has the plugins I have. And you'll look at that and think, oh, he hasn't got a lot there. Well, I don't yet. I'm still trying to figure out things that work for me and things that don't. I mean, I absolutely love X Camera. I have Head Shake. I've got Auto Gate because of one of the sceneries. But the thing here is you can turn them on and off. Now, you know, you can do that from within explain as well but this is a handy location to be able to click things on and off before i launch explain uh, the next tab along we can see we have here is if i minimize all this we have all of the uh, scenery and custom scenery packs organized into the types of things that they are airports sorted uh, the base airports regional scenery um, your your overlay stuff libraries photo scenery and a mesh and then down at the bottom here it's grayed out here because I don't have any we have needs attention so when you first run this and it scans all your scenery anything it can't figure out what it should be goes into needs attention and then you right click on them and you can assign which type of thing they are if I look here maybe in the airports these are the airports that are in installed so if I open up say USA California you can see that I've installed uh, San Diego and San Francisco. Anyway, if I write in, I was in the wrong place, I could right click on it and say, actually, that goes here instead. So, but I don't, that's in the correct place. So again, this allows you to have an overview of everything you've got installed. Because one of the things I've found, that when I start, I I know exactly what I've downloaded that night from xplane.org, whether it's a custom scenery, whether it's an airport, I go to the airport and that's great and then forever after you know, unless it's labeled as such I don't remember what it relates to where it relates to even what I had installed so this I found is starting to help me uh, have an overview of what's installed 
Uh, also, like for uh, I've been uh, using uh, Ortho for XP, of which I'll do a different video a different day. Um, I can actually see all of the different ones, and I can actually order and enable, disable. And if you notice, it's going to build your um, scenery packs. Dot any uh, um, your any file that uh, is in the correct order you need for things to work. So I haven't got mesh turned on at the moment. I've been using the photo scenery, but I have I have got a whole load of uh, HD mesh as well. But the mesh is below the photo scenery, the libraries in there, then your um, OSM, your uh, layer comes on top, and then your regional scenery, and then the airport sit on top of that. So in theory, everything should be layered correctly when you load up X-Plane, which really helps stop those problems where things don't load in the right order. That's absolutely genius as far as I'm concerned. The next tab's got information on airports and mesh. So here I can, I think, for the airports part, I can... I can search here. Uh, Don't need information. So there we go. I've got KSFO there. Analyze duplicates. It tells me information about the airport, the runway, etc., etc. Latitude, longitude. Duplicate one. Oh, maybe there is a duplicate. Anyway, that's not for me to worry about. Projection of selected airport. So boom, I can then have a look at how it's drawn in. Oh yes, there's definitely two there, aren't there? Like there's. A... I'm gonna have to find the uh, other one and remove that, but that's not part for this video right now. All enabled airports on map, so I could, yeah, I'd be able to see them all on there. Um, so that's absolutely awesome for me to be able to. So it looks like I've got a, a duplicate there I have to deal with. Um, and the other one here is the other tab under this information on airports and mesh is the mesh one as well. Boom. We go. I can look around and right now nothing's turned on but if I turn on my HD mesh you can see I have only the region I've been flying in the uh, Pacific Northwest and well most of Europe I have as well my HD mesh there I've got the HD3 mesh um, so that really you can zoom in and I can so I can see what's covered what's not And the other thing I've been found, finding this really useful for is then I've been generating scenery with Ortho for XP and it's like, what have I done? What haven't I done? So here's an example. I know exactly what I've done. I can actually see them. And you know what? If I want to turn one on or off, I don't know if you can see that over here just by London there. There you go. I'm turning the scenery on and off. Now... I also have the mesh overlays I've been generating. I only learned how to do that the other day. So there you go. I can turn that on and off. And I you can actually see it. It makes the color more yellow. So it's obvious where you have mesh and overlay. So anybody doing ortho for XP, I think this is a vital thing to be using alongside it. So that you can make sure that you've got your overlay built to go with your mesh as well. So if I turn... Oops. And if I turn all of the photo scenery off on this map, you can see this is what I've got. But overlays, so you can see I happen to be missing the one around Southampton now. I haven't done that and I haven't done this as well. Um, that's helping me manage me my um, scenery that I'm adding in. The final bit I'm just going to cover here as well, which I think is genius. But again, it's hoping that uh, other developers of sceneries and things pick up on is versions. Now, you can do it to show airports, you can do it to show libraries and uh, regional scenery. And the idea is that if it has, I think, a version.txt file within the, uh, the folder with the scenery, then this can pull out the version. So I can actually see, do I, you know, I could look online and find out, do I have the latest version of Mr. X's uh, library you need for all his amazing sceneries? Um, what I would really dearly love would be a way for to, for a URL to be built in that version.txt so it could go and see if there's a newer version. I mean, what a dream that would be that we could actually keep things updated. But of course, I mean, that means part on the work of uh, the development of X Organizer, which I think already is fantastic, but also everybody else has got to support that and X or uh, Xplain.org needs to probably change as well to support a way that 
you can easily query the latest version of different sceneries and packages. Will it happen? I don't know, but I think that would be absolutely killer for making X-Plane the, the go-to sim out there. So at this stage, that really is, as far as I use this tool, what X X Organizer is all about. It's not, it doesn't cure cancer, it doesn't solve everything out there, but for me, for managing the plugins, the scenery, understanding the airports and mesh, what I have and what I don't have, and getting X-Plane up and running with the things I actually want turned on and off is absolutely genius. So I'd recommend giving it a download, read the manual first, make a backup, and then try it out. So thank you for watching, and uh, tune back another day when I talk about some of the other utilities and plugins I've, I've been finding in my experiences as, as a new X-Plane user.